Hello, welcome. In this video, we're talking about the three means of Pythagoras. And we're going to first tie them together in this diagram here that you see in the background. Now, as a quick overview of what's going on here, this is just a classic image. I think I pulled it from Wolfram Alpha, is that you have two numbers. Now, you can have any number of numbers, but we'll start with two, and those numbers are A and B. Now, if you add them together, A plus B, that's what this length is down here, you can see that that's the diameter of this semicircle right here. So A plus B is like your diameter. Now if you're finding the arithmetic mean, it's this radius right here, which at first, wow, it's really cool, right? But also it makes a lot of sense because the arithmetic mean, you take two numbers, you divide them by two, add them up, divide by two. Well, if that's your diameter, A plus B is your diameter. If you're adding two numbers, you get a diameter, cut that in half, what do you get? What's half of a, a diameter? It's a radius. That's what this is here. What we're working on is these other means as well. Like the geometric mean, you might already know about that. It's the square root of two numbers being multiplied, not added. And it could be the nth root of n numbers being multiplied. We'll get to that. It doesn't have to be two numbers. But isn't it really cool that if you multiply a and b um, and you take the square root, that's the geometric mean, that is precisely this line here which meets at the intersection of A and B. That's the geometric mean. The harmonic mean, something else we'll talk about today, is this segment right here, from this point all the way up to this point here. So if you were to connect, let's say, the endpoint of the geometric mean with the center of your diameter, and then drop an altitude from there to this intersection point, sorry, drop an altitude from this intersection point of A and B to that line, that would give you the harmonic mean. So there are many ways, I think all I want you to be aware of is that we can actually tie these three things together constantly. But let's step back a little bit and talk about the geometric mean. As I said, um, you can actually have as many numbers as you want when you're multiplying. The ge geometric mean is the nth root of n factors. But classically, we start with two. So if you have two and 18, two numbers, what's the geometric mean? Well, it's the square root of two times 18, which is the square root of 36 which could be plus or minus six. I should have written both here, but I'll stick with positive six because that kind of lends itself to a physical meaning, which you'll see in a moment. But again, it could be plus or minus six. It's also true the geometric mean refers to the middle of a proportion. So this six right here, it's the middle of two and 18 in the sense that it fits the means of this proportion here where two and 18 are the extremes. So if you put that six right there, look what you get. Right? If I give you 2 and 18, you put 6 in the middle, you get two equal ratios. In terms of shapes, if you have 2 by 18, the geometric mean is the side length of a square with equal area. Isn't that cool? Like this is an arrow 36. Well, so is this. And actually, actually, that works with three numbers as well. Beyond that, we run out, we run out of dimensions, but at least that we can visualize here. So with three numbers, 1, 3, and 9, it's the cubed root of those three numbers multiplied or the cubed root of 27, which is three. And in terms of shapes, that's like having a one by three by nine cube, volume of 27. The geometric mean of those three numbers is a three by three by three cube, right? It's, a, it's, it's the side length of a cube with the same volume. And I wasn't sure how to set this up in any proportion, but I wanted you to see that physical meaning. Now with odd, odd roots here, there, there's no plus or minus, it's just the plus because negative three cubed is not positive 27, it's negative 27. So if you have an even root there, you wanna consider both positive and negative, like in the previous slide, I should have had a plus or minus six, but you don't need that for odd um, roots. What do we use the geometric mean for? Well, lots of things. And one of them is this interest rate problem. Now imagine you have $100 and you have $3 of interest, yay, on top of that 100, and then wow, 13, dollars on top of that it happens over two years and you're trying to think about the average return a natural way to do that is to add up the interest rates and divide it by two you get eight dollars per year that's correct right you're you're getting eight dollars each year on average but the geometric means also interesting here because when you invest a hundred dollars the way it typically works with compound interest let's say it's happening once a year you add on whatever interest rate you're given to one, so it's like a hundred and something percent that you're adding on to your original investment. So to figure out how much money you have, you do a hundred times one plus 
whatever that interest rate is. So if it's like a 4% interest rate, it would be 1.04. So 1 plus 0.04. That times 100, that's what you make in the first year. And then this whole piece, that's all that money from the first year, you compound it. So you take all the interest on the original investment, and then you take all of that and multiply it by, again, 1 plus your given interest rate. Now, t truthfully, um, you know, interest rates will fluctuate from year to year, but here, if we're trying to find the average return in terms of an interest rate, we assume one R value. And what this is saying is if you start at 100, what interest rate would you need to compound it twice so that you get 116? And that's what this mean would tell you. It would say, what would the average interest rate need to be each year so that after two years, we do have $116? So if you solve this equation, you do 116 divided by 100, and then take the square root of that, because 1 plus r is being multiplied by itself, right? So that would be 1 plus r squared equals um, 1.16. So we solve for that, we're taking the square root, and 1 plus r is the square root of 1.16. Now, that just means that 1 plus the interest rate is about 1.077. So your interest rate is just this piece here. You ignore the 1. So that's about 7.7%. .7%. That's what you would need to get a return each year if you start with 100 to end up with $116 in two years, which I, I think is interesting, right? It's not 100, it's not 8%. We don't need 8% each year or something else. It's something different. So the geometric mean, if you're getting a finance question, they're asking what's the average rate you need for return, they're probably asking you for the geometric mean. If they're asking you on average how much interest you get per year, then they're asking you for the arithmetic mean. Okay, what about this harmonic mean? Well, it does have its origins in music. That's why the word harmony is popping up. In fact, all of these means do. They're how Pythagoras and Greeks helped create the scales that we use today. All the notes and things that we have on our typical scales are built on the ideas of the arithmetic, geometric, and harmonic means. So this is really, it has its origins in music. We're going to see the harmonic mean being applied here to rate problems. So let's try some rate problems. Why don't you pause the video and give this problem a shot? Okay, so I put up the key formula here, distance is rate times time. So if you're going 30 miles per hour for one hour, and then 60 miles per hour for one hour, how far are you traveling? Well, your distance would be 30 and 60, it's 90 miles. And it's happening over two hours. Now, in this case, the average rate is just 90 divided by two, because rate equals distance divided by time. So it's 45 miles per hour. But what if we change things up a bit? And this is where we start to get what's called to what's called the harmonic mean. Try this problem out, pause the video, give it a shot, and then we'll solve it together. So this problem is a little bit trickier because even though it's still about distance, rate, and time, um, we don't know what the times are directly. So let's start to figure things out and make sense of why we can't just add 30 plus 60 and then divide it by two. So the first thing I would tell you to do is to set up a table. And on the vertical, I put distance, rate, and time. And on the horizontal, I put the, the cars I have or whatever the variables are, and this third total column. I find these tables really helpful. And what we're going to plug in are the distances, one and one, and the rates in miles per hour. And then the time, well, let's figure that out. Time, we can figure out. Time is distance divided by rate. So it's going to be 1 30th of an hour here, and then 1 60th of an hour there. Now for totals, we can go 2 miles here. We cannot add the rates. Careful, right? Rates, rates do not add directly like that. But the times we can, we can those together. 1 30th plus 1 60th, which is 1 20th in total. So if I said, what's your average rate? Well, R equals D divided by T. So our total distance 2 divided by 1 20th will be the rate. And it's 40 miles per hour, 2 divided by 1 20th. Now, oh, let me go back a second. Um, this is correct, 40, right? But I, I would also tell you to always estimate before you solve. So right away when I read this problem, I was thinking, OK, the person's going slower speed here for one mile. And over here, they're going a faster speed for the same one mile. 
So I know car A is traveling for a longer time, right? If you're going slower, it's going to take you longer to go one mile than if you're going faster. So um, I would expect the average to be closer to 30 than 60, right? 45 is right in the middle of 30 and 60, as you saw in the last problem. But because 30 is happening for longer, there's more, more time that we're going 30 miles per hour, the, the scale will balance towards slightly towards 30. So you can see 40 is closer to 30 than 60, which is exactly what I would expect. All right, try the second problem on your own. Pause the video and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. All right, so again, set up your table, plug in your givens. You've got, uh, they're both going for three miles and there are their rates and their times will be 3 50ths and 3 60ths. Then you put these things together, six, we can't add the rates. Uh, we can't add the times, that's 11 one hundredths. And the average rate, well, rate is distance divided by time. So six divided by 11 one hundredth, which I get at 54.55 miles per hour. So I hope you're thinking then in terms of estimation between 50 and 60, should the answer be closer to 50 or closer to 60? Again, in this case, it'd be closer to 50 because it's the slower speed for those three miles. So you want to think about that and the answer does line up here. Let's generalize this and get towards the harmonic mean. Of what's going on here? So set up your table. And in this case, uh, our distances are one and one. The rates are A and B. So times are one over A and one over B. So our totals are two. We can't add rates. And then over here, I get A plus B over AB. All I did was add these two fractions. So the common denominator is A times B. The first fraction, I have to multiply top and bottom by B. So it's B over AB. And this one, I have to multiply top and bottom by A. So that's A over AB. So B over AB and A over AB, that's A, that's B plus A over AB, which I thought looks better as A plus B over AB. So this is a simplified version of this sum. Now the average rate would just be two divided by this fraction here, and that simplifies. So two over A plus B over AB, when we're dividing by this fraction, we multiply it by the reciprocal. So it's gonna be two times AB, over a plus b and this is the harmonic mean for two numbers right here that's a simplified version now we can extend this um, the harmonic mean doesn't have to only apply for two numbers but in many cases we'll ask for just two numbers this is what we're asking you to find so we're asking you to find the average rate essentially for two things so the harmonic mean can be really helpful in a rate problem for two numbers uh, you saw this happen. It's 2 over 1 over a plus 1 over b. It simplifies to 2ab um, over a plus b. We just saw that happen. Right? And um, But for any amount of numbers, right? you might just be sus sus suspect that this 2 numbers matches this 2 up here. It does. But for any amount of numbers, it's going to be n over 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c there'll be n amount of numbers on the bottom, and they'll simplify to different um, structures depending on the value of n. So the harmonic mean can be extended for any amount of numbers, but in most cases, for, for at least now, we'll deal with pairs of numbers, and this is the formula you're applying. All right, I hope this helped.